Welcome back, everybody, to DreamHack Winter 2015. It's our time for our last quarterfinals, where we have two players trying to fight for the last semifinal spot. I'm Frodan. I am joined by Ecop and Noxious. How are you guys <laughs> doing today? Doing great. I mean, uh, I feel big and strong, um, especially yeah. today. It's good. You've been eating especially your Especially while standing next to this dwarf. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, they took my chair. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it's DreamHack, always awesome to be here. Always awesome to cast with you guys, especially. And I'm really looking forward to the next match that we're going to have here. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be great. We have uh, two players that really want to go through. We have Green Sheep and Borsch. Uh, Borsch, of course, being a player that you know very well from Wild TCG, right? Uh, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it's been, he's been a long time buddy from mine. I haven't seen him in a couple of years, so I was really surprised when I actually saw him at the airport uh, <laughs> while, while when arriving here. Um, him and uh, his roommate. Um, yeah, we were all um, good friends from the past, and I, s I definitely look forward to see him perform here. Uh, he's been very nervous in the past days um, while being on stage. Uh, we've seen him struggle a little bit, uh, but he's prevailed, and now he's in the top uh, four. Uh, top eight. Uh, top eight I mean. Oh, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. He yeah. has to go through Green Sheep, uh, who's been, uh, you know, kind of a player that people kept their eye on once in a while because of his performance last year at the EU Regionals, where he was able to even qualify for BlizzCon itself. Uh, at BlizzCon 2014, he did get eliminated in the round of 16, but he did go on to start pegging a name for himself pretty well throughout the European scene, competing some other events, um, and most notably a lot of the European circuit, like Insomnia and DreamHack. Yeah, Green Sheep especially this year has made a huge name for himself. Um, he won DreamHack Valencia mm -hmm. and uh, has performed fairly well in some other tournaments. Um, and actually, he is the first, uh, the uh, the only player right now in the bracket that's remaining who has ch the chance to become um, a two-time DreamHack champion in Hearthstone, the first ever. Yeah, yeah. well, it'd that's be cool. True. And also, he's the only player in Hearthstone that was sponsored by a pizza place. Totino's? I don't no. know. Wait, wait, Domino's, wait. I think. Really? Yeah. That it was sponsored by Domino's? That was, that was, uh... Is that a joke? <laughs> wait, I don't get... Wait, so, oh, okay, so he wasn't actually sponsored. No, no, he was. I'm sure of that. What? So he kept saying it is... Allegedly. A allegedly. I have to show oh, a picture. Oh, gotcha. OP, OP. All right, well, uh, you know, taking a look at uh, how everything has transpired, it comes down to the last semifinal spot, and top four, remember, is guaranteed even more points and more money. Uh, you get 2500 of course, for uh, being top eight, but 5000 for going into the semifinals. A lot of money on the line here. And we're expecting some big things out of both these players. I mean, it's a really big run because, again, if you get these points, going into 2016, you get a lead because the seasons are shorter. Um, shorter so it's important that you get them now. Yes, that's true. And um, for Bosch, this is a difficult test. Mm -hmm. We have seen him not making the optimal plays yesterday, so hopefully he prepared well uh, during the night. Well, you know, you should. This is like the first... Um, his first international appearance on a broadcasted tournament and they want to be on top of your game so yep. no, no nerves and exact knowledge about your opponent's deck should uh, bring your A game here certainly and you know it doesn't come without controversy as well yesterday he beats uh, Zed a lot and a lot of people were not really happy with how that went down and so here's an opportunity for him to continue show and be like you know what um, you know even if Getting here wasn't exactly the, the, the cleanest road. I mean, it was pretty rocky to get here. Um, you know, I can really show off what I have now. and Because it, it doesn't matter what happened in the previous series. From this point on, it's single elimination. So just play your best and win. And from that point on, just demonstrate play that shows that you belong there. It will definitely be interesting to also see how Boris takes um, takes up the pressure that he's facing down. Because he was under a lot of stress and a lot of, a lot of pressure, especially with all the negativity coming from uh, the, the internet, uh, with all the controversy oh that no. transpired. Oh, no. Really? Negativity? Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> a, lo a, lot of <laughs> a lot of people like me don't, uh, don't really care much about the negativity. Activity, right, but uh, some some people take it to heart, and uh, he really had a, a rough morning. But uh, I think he's fine now. You yeah. shouldn't read the newspapers, man. It, it's it's tough, man, when you have a lot of uh, you know voices coming at you, and it's really hard to ignore some of that. But you know what? I mean, if you're able to sit down with him, chat, maybe you can calm down a little bit. The nerves and intensity are real. Let's take a look at the lineups. Very similar classes with Druid and Paladin. Those seem to be the two classes of choice, followed by a selection of Mage on both sides. That's something that we don't really see very often, um, considering that Green Sheep is playing more aggressive Mage, and we see also the Ethereal Conjurer. This is the card that I was calling to attention right before the tournament started. I think that card is slightly underrated, but at the same time, I do think it's not 
Not the most powerful card. I think it's just a cool tool that you can use. And Ecop and Lothar are stunned in silence. <laughs> 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 I mean, I definitely agree. It is a very good tool for mage, especially the tempo mage. Uh, it kind of fills the same oh, niche as Azure Drake. Bors yep. um, uh, chooses to play like two Azure Drakes, and, and, and in addition, oh, he plays uh, both yeah. Azure Drake. And, oh, okay, well. Yeah, he explained yesterday that he cut the end game, so he has he has no Antoniders, no Doctor Boom, no. I think anything else that has um, yeah. Yeah, some, more some, than six some, mana. Some people might run Ronin or something like that. But, but he's running. The, his top of this curve is five mana. Okay. Unless he will get a Flame Strike That's really or Blizzard impressive. from the Discovery. I like that. Well, I mean, specifically against Secret Paladin, it can go really well if you get a Flame Waker down with some of those spells. And I'm looking at cards like Mirror Image to be one of the power play cards. Unfortunately, with that consecration, it means it won't really have a high impact at all. Well, it will uh, have an effect with these uh, with the flame worker, uh, flame uh, walker, because then you can just you know act as a ping, random pings. It's like yeah, basically so. and less um, less powerful arcan missiles. Or if there's a counter spell that happens to deny that consecration, which would be very awesome as well. That was actually a current spell yesterday, right? Yeah, there was uh, Zethalot, I believe. Plays yes, co plays counter spell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not necessarily Borsh. And something to also consider is that if he's playing two with Mirror Entities, he would want that to be activated first before the second scientist dies. So with that in mind, would he end up using Mirror Image here to just make sure that he can prioritize that correctly? Yeah, using Mirror Image here in order to protect the Mad Scientist kind of, so he, g he might get additional value out of it. Um, decides to not go for it though. Um, yeah, he knows that Consecration is a viable threat, um, so he doesn't want to play into that. Yeah, not to mention that you lose your ability for a very strong turn 4 play with the Flame Waker as well. With that, though, the Competitive Spirit does activate, and Green Chief gets a very nice snipe here onto the Mana Worm. Uh, his follow-up play is also very interesting, considering that the board is not big enough to warrant a Consecration, so he just plays Seeker Keeper instead. Oh, I was interesting... Uh I actually was thinking about play just playing Trusable Champion this turn because it allows you to save mana for an upcoming turn and swings the tempo in your favor even uh, in a more important way than uh, just a you know minion because the board didn't change. You did add a minion to your opponent's um, opponent's board and uh, developing the Trusable yeah. Champion will mess up your curve if you will get a minion next turn from True. the top of the deck. And also. Um Playing the Secret Keeper next turn in uh, combination with Consecration, um, it's a really good uh, turn five. Yeah, I agree. So well, let's see what the Flame Waker hits. And that ends up being good for the Consecration. In fact, that's very good for the Consecration. Yep, it fits well. It's a complete board wipe right there. And, uh, you know, if that end up being a, a... Actually, I think it didn't matter because no matter what happened, a one attack minion would survive, so we had mm -hmm, the... Mm -hmm. The Light's Justice to attack, but I guess in that case it doesn't have to take the extra two damage. But in this situation, Boss will have the initiative, and the problem is that his Azure Drake that he has uh, now in the hand, and I don't think there's any other minion in his deck that has more than 4 HP actually, uh, will die to the Truce of a Champion. I, th I think actually that's right. He no, he has a load of a 5 HP, and that's his only minion with more HP than 4. What? Which is ultimately... Oh, man. That's a mm. good top deck. Well, that's something that you could also play instead of the True Silver Champion. Right Might on be more curve. Powerful. It is significantly more powerful. And how does Borsh respond? First, uh, he has to know what four secrets there are, but he does have direct fireball removal. I guess you first can... Oh, look, there's Dr. Boom in the deck. Yeah, there is Boom in the deck. Um, first, you can pop the... Secret, but you know what? I wonder if he feels like he can take his time to even like frostbolt the um, the mysterious challenger instead of actually fireballing it. So that way you can mm -hmm. even take the turn to develop the mana worm instead. Okay, yeah, that might happen. feel like it's slightly better because then you can also ping the two one by doing this. Wait, Bosch is playing Dr. Boom. He lied to us yesterday. Dude, the what mind games. Said? The mind games. Redemption, and the last one should be Avenge. Wait, okay, so sorry, the Avenge already went. So the last one should be Repentance then, right? Because we already saw Competitive Spirit. 
Well, he ends up pinging this down, and then that means the Azure Drake does get traded for what's on board here. Mm -hmm. I don't so think. I think it's just because the damage may have was too even. But now Doctor Boom is not. It's going to be challenged somewhat by uh, this Lothep. And if your opponent picked up Blessing of Kings or something, then it's not really a high impact at all for this boom. The problem for Greenship is the fact that he has now stacked weapons in his hand, which are completely useless for a long time. No, I mean, they're not completely useless. Come on. I mean, it's true silver champion. It's still I mean, the, the second copy of the card is completely useless for at least two turns. Two yeah. turns. Yeah, makes it, sense. It feels so bad for Boris right here. Being able to play the Dr. Boom, but at the same time not being able to play it because, because of the of repentance. repentance on the board. Yeah, so he just plays Sorcerer's Apprentice instead. And then, you know, that turn later developing Dr. Boom is, you know, really annoying. Yep. Something also curious is that, um, you know, Green Sheep decided to go for this little attack because he really anticipates using Choose Silver Champion, but he might not need to. The Dr. Boom yeah. overrides the Crucible <laughs> Champion easily, yeah. by far. Instantly. Now, do you pick off the Source of Penis or do you pick off the Mana Worm? Source of Penis reducing a lot of the mana cost can be problematic. Uh, I, I think you just killed the Mana Worm. has bigger damage potential, so it might be, like with a second Fireball, Face. Uh, balls might be able to clear both Low Dev and... Uh, Doctor Boom of those minions. But this is this is what yeah. this attack is what we're gonna see from Green Sheep a lot. He just likes to go face a lot, a and he really emphasizes that with all his three decks. <laughs> he keeps saying, "Just go face." Every time, every time he t uh, it's, uh, we see players making decisions, wait. Green Sheep's comment is, "Just go wait. face." Wait, wait, wasn't Green Sheep the player that traded with the giant? Yeah, he did. He yeah. did. He over traded one game oh. that ended up losing. So. Uh, Maybe maybe he's taking like a lesson like, see, I tried trading one game <laughs> and look what happened. Yeah, well, that now was I actually a bad face. decision, but that. Well, uh, I definitely think you want a frostbolt boom here. Um, the question is, I don't know if you actually gain much by arcane missiles. In fact, you might um, open Wait a, a can bit, of right? worms. Yeah, maybe might. maybe he is even playing the Antonidas and just keep that for you know the arcane <laughs> missiles. <laughs> No. Oh, okay, no. It's this arcane missile heavily impl implies that he's not having it tonight. Oh, oh. But he didn't attack, not, right? Not yet. Oh, wait. Oh, oh and so that's so. a snipe on the low thib. Okay, okay. And then now he can kill into Dr. Boom. You know, that plays around consecration number two. And this is what I said about the uh, leaving the mana worm on board. Yeah. So. The mana worm end up getting revenge on low thib, right? There's like, exactly. well, you should have killed me. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, the mage is out of cards, and the quality of hand the Paladin has is pretty strong. It's yeah, not only got uh, power, but it's got value. Next in it will be um, Eternal Conjurer into oh, Arcan Intellect. Oh, oh man, because if it's like the Boom Bot, that would have just been terrible. Oh my god, that was so wow, close. That would have been disastrous if that was the case. And now, it's weapons versus... Nothing really, <laughs> and uh, Boris is just gonna get shut down, and he's so far away. Um, if if he if Green Sheep was at ten health or below, then you can ha seriously consider it. But even then, he would heal the two silver champions. Do you think Green Sheep just might go face because oh. two, uh, two true silvers represent? Yes, he will go 16 face. Sixteen damage. <laughs> 16 damage. <laughs> that'd be uh, that'd be really funny. I mean, if he was drawing like mini bots, I would actually argue that that could be it. Yeah, but but Tyrion, uh, of course, just yeah. the way better alternative here. Oh, <gasps> oh here my go. God, Deathwing, Black Knight, nope. a Dark Bane. Aid of Dark Bane is pretty good in Temple Mage when you play a very spare centric approach to it. Um, because you're naturally targeting your own minions a lot with spells, like plus attack, plus uh, health, um, or even like taunt. So, not the most unreasonable minion, but not that impactful. Redemption. I guess you can just suicide one of your 1 1s into it and then really just make Tyrion go all the way home. Wow, Green Sheep trading! Not going face! Look at that. I mean, he probably set up lethal for next turn. Probably. Yeah. Uh, well, as long as Tyrion survives, he has lethal. So that's what it was like. You can cash in, but it shouldn't be that big of a deal. Borsh picks up Pilot Shredder, and that's going to wrap up game number one here. Paladin off to a very good start yet again. And this mage deck, I think he was looking to stay alive because he would love to have it kill the druid. Oh, yeah, definitely. That would be this. This mage deck is practically made for 
decks uh, for uh, for for challenging decks like Druid and other mid range decks. So it feels bad for Borge. Now he has to f to challenge the Paladin with Druid, I guess. Or just go for the mirror match. Hmm. Harsh decision. I mean, uh, the Druid might be able to easily win against the Paladin if it will get the acceleration, like the fastest way possible. So invades and keepers, and uh, yeah. basically that's what you need. Yep. Ooh, green sheep not in approval. He got the challenger, uh, and it's gonna be going up against either the Nerubian egg. I'm just thinking what just happened. Nerubian egg and paladin. Yeah, I so like it. Wait, what? Uh, keeper, keeper of Ulduman. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. The keeper play. And, and actually, uh, these keepers too, because they set up it on one a one no, attack. No, you can't. Um, can only target enemy. You only can do enemy minions, keeper. but it's an it's it's against if your opponent you play on curve, he can't play peacekeeper for tempo. Because he has to make your egg go <laughs> one attack minion. <laughs> Just like uh, Keeper Voldemort oh, on um, a board with a 1-1 one, one, as on yeah. the opposite side is not what you want <laughs> on turn 4. So, uh, next level stuff. Well, I you have also Kalkheimers for the axe too, which is not bad. Yeah, the only I mean, it's it's not bad, but you'd rather have a minion with attack because um, zero, <laughs> zero attack divine shields don't really do much. It's just a wall. Ah, uh, but th this case, man, that cock hammer. This is a really strong start for Boris. Green Chief trying to contest an after juggler with a, a mini bot, but the mustard for battle will potentially clean it up. Oh. No. Okay, oh, and one more okay. hit. One more hit. Oh. oh. And this is. Um, it's a pretty big deal. This is how, how the knife juggler is volatile when it comes to the outcomes of this of this card. Is if. This, the third knife would land on the minion, it would completely change uh, the way of the game. Huh. Because it, it would force Green Ship to use Consecration this turn instead of his Master for Battle. Yeah, exactly. So now he saves the coin, basically, for the Mysterious Challenger, potentially, and he has, still has the Consecration in hand. Two Cog Hammers, and I wonder if he plays two Blessing of Kings as well, considering that he's got cards like the Nerubian Egg. Either way, I believe the Pilot Shredder might be one of his better options this turn. Um, although, are you playing cleanup or are you going to be a little bit more aggressive on the on the push? Hmm. Probably actually want to clean everything up here. Yeah, I guess the Pilot Shredder will be the best option anyway. Mm -hmm. Especially with the Blessing of Kings, it's going to be just a huge minion as, uh, and you have the, uh, the Light's Justice to go around Noble Sacrifices. Exactly, and you also have Cockhammer for really good trades. If he just ends up mirroring you by playing another Shredder, mm -hmm. then yeah. you have really good tempo. And you have two of them, and, and Cockhammer is just really powerful in those scenarios where you can pick off really good trades just like this. Well, Noble Sacrifice will stop the weapon attack. We we'll still, still have the option to uh, clear the minion with ease. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Grishi is doing his best to try and make sure that he can set up the best Mysterious Challenger turn. Which is wise. Um, personally, I don't like playing two cock hammers in Paladin. It feels that it might really make your draws awkward. Especially when you're running two Truce of the Champions. But I guess people that are running two cock hammers are running just only one uh, Truce of the Champion. Maybe even none, right? Right, especially if you are going for early game minions, uh, I can definitely see two cock hammers being useful. It's just about drawing them at the same time. Yeah. And you're never really going to get use of all those weapon charges. Come on, it's like six attacks. Not to mention you might also have uh, Tyrion and Mustard for battle stuff. So Good thing it's not a weapon for Shaman because it, it would have Overload with the same exact, this, you know. This yeah. Look at this, this is interesting actually. Um, he had, um, Boris had the option to attack with a weapon first. Um, to to proc the noble sacrifice because um, by playing the cog hammer first he uh, took Ooh, the risk of yeah. getting divine the knife shield. juggle yeah. on the divine shield. Very good catch. Uh, so yeah. a sloppy play from Boss might have costed him a trade, but it ended up working out okay. And even got the repentance on the egg. So repentance being drawn out means there's four secrets being pulled here, and Borsh does have stuff to do. This is really interesting. The keeper of Oldemon. This is kind of, oh, even interesting, more interesting. Pews of such a well, it makes sense started. when you play double cock hammers and keep yours. Yeah, and eggs. So, now that he has it, um, this, I mean, he can he can first use the abusive sergeant to activate the egg. Then he can use keeper of Oldemon uh, to control the avenge target. Okay, he gets, I guess he's going to uh, use the weapon to prop it. 
it's about the same difference. But the Keeper Voldemort here is really nice to just control the state of the Mysterious Challenger. I, I guess it's the same difference whether you use the egg to pop the Noble Sacrifice or to kill the Redemption token. Not a really big difference. The other option, of course, is to uh, use Blessing of Kings, but I think this is much better. Wow, what a board! What a board! What Mysterious Challenger supposed to do stuff? It did nothing! It actually helped your opponent pop the egg. That was that sick tech <laughs> oh that worked goodness. out conveniently very well. And he's got a second cog hammer with Blessing of Kings on turn seven to make sure that his, his tempo is accelerated even further on board. Yeah, this paladin is really board orientated. And you know what? He actually helped clean up the, some of the mess so that way he can get a really good <laughs> cog hammer. <laughs> he doesn't want to land it on like the two one. Although he probably would have traded it anyways. Another Pile the shutter, wow. So you you can attack with the weapon on the two two. Um, you know that this is competitive spirit, so there's another there's no other secret you're really afraid of. Mm -hmm. Then you can re equip another cog hammer. But do you want a blessing of kings for like just start going aggressive, or do you want to just develop pilot shredder? I think at one point uh, Boris will have to push the aggression, so uh, just put green chief on the defense and force him to do trades. Currently, uh, Green Chief is still in the lead when uh, it comes to the health total, but this is the moment where Boris can actually take back control of the game, of the health lead. And I think this is the turn where he's going to do it. All right, so second cog hammer. I don't mind the Kings here, but I think he might know that, like, you know, Keeper Voldemort is around in the deck, so just keep his board diverse and maybe force uh, another play. Hmm. Lotheb Juggler, don't do anything in tandem. Well, it's just a minion to maybe push into some trades, but from this position I would say that Bosch would like to go face with at least two minions and just trade the cock hammer uh, into the knife juggler. Okay. So now this ends up picking off one of the minions and forcing your opponent to go through. That's really inconvenient. Uh, or so he thinks. I mean, there is a blessing of kings to make sure that the trades are good. Juggle juggle. Lands on the Pilot Shredder. Wow. Double Blessing of Kings. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I knew. I, I, as soon as I saw like the egg and stuff, I'm like, he had to play two Blessing of Kings. He's so early game board centric. Then I'm sure that he's not playing two Silver Champions. Too many four drops. Keepers, Pilot Shredders, and two Blessing of Kings. That's six cards for four mana. Ooh, smash. And that's another King. That is going to go to the face. Oh. Bad. All right, well, this competitive spirit is going to need to do a lot more. Uh, what what can he draw here? Nothing, you're dead. Is not enough. No. Uh, oh, he's he, just too strong. Yeah. Too strong. I'm trying to see if he can pop the shredder, but he can't. And there's nothing else to do. Yep. Unless. No, there's no. Stuff. Now, there's no way you can. Uh, there's nothing. The I was situation. like, what if uh, something from Shredder and then Boom Bots? But I don't think that's the case here. So that's going to wrap up the game. And uh, Borsch takes a very important Paladin mirror. You know, having the Paladin around is also good because I think that's the the strongest deck out of everyone's lineup here. Uh, from judging by the way he built his Paladin, it might be actually targeting other Paladins, right? Yeah, it is very good um, in the Paladin Mirror. Um, you have uh, the Nerubian Egg, which is always a huge card, unless your opponent uh, runs True Silver. Most of, uh, I mean, many Secret Paladins even cut True Silver as well, yep. uh, as far as I know, in, Not favor, in favor of Cog Hammer. So the Nerubian is actually a very strong minion um, in, in the Mirror matchup. All right, so if Borsch can get past this Mage, then he will be in a really good position to wrap it up. Otherwise, Green Sheep will take this one with the Mage and send it to the Druid matchup, which would be really hard for Borsch to overcome. Yeah, definitely. He's not on the coin. That's not good for Green Sheep. Meanwhile, Borsch also has the Mysterious Challenger with the coin, so he's got some options here with his mulligan. Oh, was that, was that what he had after? Oh, no, okay, he threw it away. I was wondering if that was the, the options that were left after he swapped it out. So he kept the, the old amount, right? From what it looks like, unless he happened to mulligan, it seemed to me that he, like exactly. he mulliganed everything away. Maybe uh, oh, I got the looking same for a specific card, okay. like Cog Hammer or Master for Battle. Maybe egg, because yeah, you know Mid Tempo Mage, so it's going to be popping that egg naturally. 
It's very weird that he more like away the mysterious challenger, right? Even though you play against a temple mage? Nah, he, he wants early board. He doesn't want to, like, mana worm to single-handedly kill him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which can happen in this matchup. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Like, if he plays turn one mana worm, and then you pass, and then... Yeah. But, you know what? I mean, Green Sheeps has um, a Mad Scientist, and he's got some uh, draw card draw with Burn. It could be a very quick game if Borsh doesn't develop stuff quickly. I would... Think about cock hammering this turn just to kill the mad scientist to go into mirror entity abusive sergeant. Mm -hmm. Upcoming turn, then trade with a cock hammer circus attack to the abusive sergeant and try to develop the board in the meantime because it's the the um the whole point of uh temple mage is to abuse secrets like mm, mm, like mirror entity for huge tempo gain for mm, less than even card draw involvement in, in his uh, from mage side because basically the better entity is a card draw and free mana for a free board control so the in a uh, really huge um, swing from the mirror entity is something that mage relies on besides uh, i don't think that boris will be in a position where um, he can use the fog hammer well in f with the buff the, uh, it will have to be like a defensive um, divine shield, and Mage has um, no absolutely no problem dealing with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the hero power is the natural counter to divine shields. All right, Flame Waker here, right on the curve, and it's because he doesn't anticipate uh, with Borsh using the coin a wafer to deal with it. And he's right. Yeah, I mean, there's no way um, Borsh can deal with the Flame Waker, and this will be a huge threat to his board. It will not be contested really quickly and uh looking judging from the cards that Borsch has it would be very hard he might just go for the abusive sergeant to trigger the mi mirror entity but attack with the cock hammer uh, to the flame waker but he doesn't plan on doing that if he buffs the <laughs> flame waker first just imagine just imagine if Borsch had the nerubianic in this situation it would be so amazing yeah nerubianic would be good, really good forcing green ship to ping his egg twice to have any effect <laughs> yeah do you develop the knife jugger to contest, or is it just too risky? I think it's too risky. So then you just avenge? Because hero power is basically equivalent of doing nothing. Well. I think playing the knife jugger is perfectly fine. What are you going to do with it, really? You have no master in your hand to like get yeah. some good combos. So might as well just put it on the board as a, as a good minion. The thing is, it's, it is three health total. Um, so the Flame Waker doesn't exact. I mean, it could get unlucky. It can shoot the face, and then Knife Juggler yeah. ends up being this awkward thing where he has to trade into, and then the weapon's relevant. Or so he thinks. And the Frostbolt. Oh! Oh, it shuts it down. That's interesting. Would you, um, favor using Flame Cannon instead of Frostbolt? Nah, not when, when four, turn four is coming in. You know there's a lot of possibilities coming out here. Also, it, it just gives you a bit of a risk that, um, no, actually, it doesn't. Never mind. <laughs> well, Pilot Shredder does end up uh, stat-wise lining up to it, but this is where the Flame Cannon is very good. In fact, now that with he has a Sorcerer's Apprentice, he can Sorcerer's Apprentice, Flame Cannon, followed by Arcane Intellect, this or is even Mirror Entity if he chooses to try to get ahead on board tempo. This is just nuts. Yeah. yeah, Mirror Entity seems to be better in this situation. Because you can't kill uh, unless you you attack with no, uh, with the flame waker here. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, although that's not bad. I mean, there's no difference for, survived. for uh, yeah for green ship here and the Nerubian Blessing of Kings. will yeah. actually work against Borsh in this wow. situation. No, because no. It, it, it he has a target for the Blessing of Kings, so he can perfectly trade into this flame waker now. That's okay. great. And yeah, that's actually good because now not only that, but it looks like the minion will stick. Um, if the minion sticks... Okay, he can't play Mysterious Challenger, which is also slightly hilarious because it's it's, it's finally been nerfed to 8 mana. <laughs> um, but it, as such, it's like the strongest minion, so what do you do? Oh, Fireball? Also, oh, okay, that's <laughs> awkward. <laughs> <laughs> this is awkward. It is a big threat, so... We might actually see Green Sheep Fireball that. Yeah, it's a 5-5. Five five. What are you, you're supposed to take it, like, you're supposed to have board control here. But the opponent has 14 HP. What if you just go Fireball, you, you just play Spell Slinger here? Yeah. And you save the Fireball for your opponent's face, and I think that's what you should do. What's amazing, too, is, like, because of the Mirror Entity. Oh, oh my god! Wow. 
That is pretty. Ho that oh, you know you can play Mysterious John. Wait, no, there's a mirror entity though. He now he'll play Keeper of Oldemont instead. This game is so weird all of a sudden. Keeper of Oldemon means that um, doesn't really help that much because your opponent will still have a naturally stronger board, but you can use Demon Fire to help clean up. Yeah, I think that should be made. And th that should be the move. There's no way you can give Mysterious Challenger to your opponent, so this is probably the only play that you can make here. Why not? The Mysterious Challenger is just a 6-6 six, six minion and you gain the secrets. Just a 6-6 six, six minion? You're 14 health, son! <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no time for games! <laughs> This is a very serious matter. You lose this game, you're down 2-1. You're going to play Druid versus Mage. Although, uh, I mean, this is also a lot of damage coming in. Choose it to attack first to test for the secret. Oh! The like this second fireball. And it's that's going to wrap it up. Game. Unless he draws something magical off the top here. And Keeper's not it. Um, even if he, like, destroys the board completely this turn, which it looks like he... Can. No, he can't. You know what? We're getting too much keepers in this game. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? I mean, even Ma Mage is playing keepers of Oldemon, apparently. Mysterious Challenger is great, but it doesn't stop fireballs. It's not like a Noble Sacrifice will pop out and intercept the fire mid-burn. And that's Six. it. Green Chief's going to take a 2-1 lead here. With double fireballs to the face to show dominance. Yeah, well, to no also face. actually kill him, because you don't know if he, <laughs> you have enough burn, because if Noble Sacrifice got pulled out, the Pilot Shredder would not be able to do anything. So game three, a very crucial game, I might add, goes to Green Sheep. And now he has the advantage of the m final matchup between uh, Mage and uh, Druid, which probably might be the last game. Bosch is looking to be um, is looking to be eliminated if the matchup will go as it usually goes. So, um, what are you looking for as Druid in this particular I matchup in your voice. opening hand? Innervates, of course. Darnass. 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 And that opening hand is very close, if not exactly what Green Sheep wants, compared with the Mana Worm. Just take those two things and put them together. Because uh, Mana Worm would be insane. Uh, okay. There's the Mana Worm, but the Flame Cannon for one mana and Unstable Portal for one mana will be just... Yeah. Oh man, I don't know even what to say, because that Nasus Aspen will be just thrown back to the graveyard. Who knows, we might just see Wrath here. Yeah, Wrath would... Probably okay, stronger because our Nasus Aspirin gets contested, and he, if their Nasus Aspirin dies anyways, he doesn't have a play the following turn. So, Wrath actually is the play. And with that, Green Sheep might just have to unstable portal, which is not bad. It's not bad. Uh, it might even be like something he gets six mana to be reduced to three. Oh god! Lover. What? That's another That's flame cannon. That's where the bomb went. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Two mana bomb lobber seems like a really good fit for this type of deck. Yeah, it's able, um, like besides flame cannon. And now he has an additional out against. Dude, he's got two us. flame cannons. What? One with legs. One with legs. One that summons a three-three. And that one is strictly better. I guess it's, it's not. It's worse against mirror entity. Wow, board is like, oh god. That hurts. A 3 3 minion is uh, something that Pal uh, sorry, Druid doesn't really want to f uh, face because he has to use a Wrath to deal with it. It's the same case like when uh, Druid is playing against Rogue. He doesn't want to see the fa far Seers and Agents because he has to waste time killing those with, wrath with Wraths or even Swipes. Alright, well, I'm sensing another crazy shenanigans. How about another Bomb Lobber? Oh, oh my god! Oh, I love this card! And you know what's really sick is that he can uh, he can pair this with just like flame cans, fireballs, and um, if that ends up being a thing, he's just gonna summon more board tempo. He doesn't need mirror entity. It is so good in tempo match. Are you kidding me? That's this is so insane. sick. I mean, oh. this card for two mana 
would be really good in constructed. Yeah, yeah. I think finally <laughs> summoning stone might be viable. Oh, Borscht really doesn't have a minion to do other than a keeper of the grove. Look at the, the turn six from Green Sheep. Stone into Fireball into a Pile to Shredder. <laughs> uh, Would it just yeah. go Fireball phase? From <laughs> Fire <Rising. laughs> I mean, it's uh, basically you're playing a four mana minion. Yeah. Is, is there like a four mana minion that's, that's terrible to have? Um, There's Wee Stopper. Oh, it's, isn't that good? Jeeves, that maybe? Is that why? Jeeves, yeah. Yeah, Jeeves might not be the best. Uh. Especially oh, since man. Green Sheep is running. Uh, I'm kind of excited, uh, guys, because he can Spell Slinger and get even more shenanigans. Yeah, he has to go for the Spell Slinger here. Are you sure? I think Pilot Shredder is also pretty good on board. Yeah, okay, you're right. Spell Slinger is funner, though. Yeah! yeah. It's go going Green Sheep. Uh, Norish. That's not bad. Oh, no! Preemptively dropping it. Yeah, he's oh, not, I don't oh. like that at all. I don't like that at all. He just lost the tempo gain that he can have with, with it. Yeah, he's supposed to do that on turn six, right? Yeah, well turn six was if, perfect. That is if Boris dedicates his resources to kill the summoning stone. Which is a high target priority, and I, I think this card has super taunts. It's Emperor Thorson level of you could just lose the game if it just has one fireball. That I fireball could be like a yeti, and then it's just like, wow. I mean, I'm sure Boris has never played against Summoning Stone, <laughs> so maybe he doesn't uh, respect think it. Respect it. He doesn't respect maybe it. Maybe he doesn't think it's that high of a threat. Respect the stone, Boris. You know what to do. You know what's interesting too is that um, if he does end up removing, it's gonna take almost his entire turn, which maybe does give Mage some tempo too. Maybe it's also like Fatal Attraction. He just wants to know what happens. Ah, oh, come on! You can't do that. <laughs> Well, ends up dedicating his entire turn to removing, and uh, that that gives initiative to Green Sheep. Man, I was really hoping for Flame Cannon. Uh, not Flame Cannon, sorry, Fireball. With yeah, I'm disappointed in Green Sheep. Really. He, he went for the cool play, the cool setup with the Spell Slinger, but yeah. If he was going to play the Summoning Stone, then the Palter Shredder would just be better. Uh, yeah, it definitely would be. Now there's nine mana available. Uh, you can play the Sludge Belcher and Swipe, or you can just set up Emperor Thorsten with and reducing your hand. I'm not sure how much reducing the hand really helps, though, because some of those cards are just really awkward to pair together. Not to mention if Thorsten does get easily killed by a ping plus the Pile to Shredder, Pile to Shredder. Right. Doesn't really do much, but um, seems like the Belcher has to be played this turn. Huh. Yeah, certainly. And with that, that means Dr. Boom will come down and start demanding a lot of attention. And, you know, Mage is up in wait, resources. Wait. What about Antonidas instead? <laughs> yeah, I think the Boom is better. Nah. I mean, the Antonidas is uh, after you you think the Druid thinks he's stabilized. You know, he's the dagger yeah. that, that gets twisted in. Dr. Boom just puts way more immediate pressure on the board, and um, also he's seen BGH come out of um, yeah. the force already, it's so true. he's definitely not af afraid of that anymore. Uh, well, I mean, at this point, Green Sheep could, you know, vomit whatever comes out of his hand onto the board, and I think he'd be in a really dominant position. Druid is struggling, and that innervate draw is terrible for Borsh. Unless he gets something really good for himself off that shredder. So um, I don't really Doomsayer. see. Uh, yeah, Doomsayer or, you know, I don't know, Explosive Sheep or something. That's quite fortunate. Yeah, that's good. And I guess you don't want to. This, this, you want the Dr. Boom to attack the first body of Sludge Belcher. But I think you do want to kill the shredder as well. No, Auto Barber is definitely around above average. No Doomsayer today. I feel like we haven't seen Doomsayer out the Shredder in a while. Not certainly not this tournament. Well, there are a lot of new two drops added to the game, so yeah. it decreases the chances of getting sure. extra Doomsayer. All right, here we go, Flame Waker time, and we'll have a lot of fireworks coming with this Fireball plus the Boombot coming out, and that should spell the beginning of the end. Drew doesn't really have a response to this. And this uh, slime might be getting killed now. No, Jeez. Oh my god. Can Borsch do anything to stop this? Nope. No, that is... I mean, he could play his, his hand. 
But what is that? What the good is that gonna do? Force of nature doesn't even clear off. Um, like a sig he doesn't even clear off half the board of this damage. It's like you have to do that in hero power, and then just take the damage here. And then that doesn't allow him to play Druid of the Claw. So. Yep. Which means that that is a free development of. Uh, Antonidas? <laughs> oh. Well, seems like Antonidas to me. Yeah, oh, that, yep, that, that's yeah, an it's definitely Antonidas. It is Fireball O'Clock. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't even need it. He can just hit boom to face. Seven damage to the face probably will seal the deal. He needs mind control tech. Oh. Mind control tech into MCT what? into That's uh, innervate fireball boom. <laughs> Can you do stupid stuff like that? I don't know. That would have been pretty nuts if that was the case, though. Yeah, but Force of Nature will not do it, and Green Sheep takes the series. Yeah, 3-1. He I becomes see. our last semifinalist here at DreamHack Grand Prix. And job well done. Looks like he has won the battle of not just the quarterfinals, but also the black and yellow. What, what seems to be the with jer team jerseys in black and yellow? Is that the new trend? Is that what it takes to be good at Hearthstone? Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's like the same trend like the, that you see in cinemas, that every single movie has two cookies and orange on the posters. It makes sense. I think uh, maybe that could be the secret. Or maybe... Maybe it's just maybe a really intimidating good. color combination. It so is. look like it a is. bee? Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but bee are, uh, bees are good. Come over, Green Sheep. All right. Uh, welcome, uh, Green Sheep, our last semifinalist here. What's up, man? How you feeling? Feels good, man. Yeah? Feels yeah. good? Oh, man, I love your accent. It's such a breath of fresh air. <laughs> yeah, we missed you yesterday when Green Ship was here. Yeah. British Aww. accent's the best. <laughs> yeah. What can I say? You can keep talking. That's what you're doing. So <laughs> talk, uh, let, let's, uh, let's hear a little bit about um, how you were spending the past uh, last night uh, preparing for anything. Did you... Uh, were you worried at all about Borscht? Were you happy with him as your opponent, or were you kind of scared? Well, uh... The last match uh, that Boz played was against Zetalot, and uh, Zetalot had uh, Priest in his lineup, and I was really scared of Priest, so I was really relieved that uh, Boz actually won that match, because Priest was one of the few decks that could actually free out my lineup, and uh, Boz actually has a pretty decent lineup, but I think my lineup's better compared to Boz's, because um, all of my decks can beat all of his decks, while some of, like, the Druid deck probably can't beat any of my decks. His Druid deck? Yeah, because okay. uh, all my decks are triple aggro, so I've got Secret Paladin, I've got Tempo Mage, and I've got Aggro Druid, so they all stomp the Druid deck. Mm. Oh, okay, gotcha, the Aggro Druid. Uh, so seeing that matchup there must have been really comforting, but were you surprised at all by the results of some of his weird tech, like the Ruby and Egg and other stuff in the, in the Secret Paladin? Yeah, himself? like last night uh, we all got sent deck lists, so I looked through his lists and they were like really wacky, like uh, I knew... His Tempo Mage had that uh, the five mana card. I don't yeah, even know what it the, is. It's the like the Discover control, yeah. card. Yeah, right. that was like I was so confused about that. I've never seen that card actually being played. Yeah, and uh, yeah, his Secret Paladin only runs like uh, eight secrets or six secrets. He like only runs like the three of a kind secrets. Doesn't run Repentance. Doesn't run uh, compared to Spirit. Compared to Spirit, yeah, okay. and uh, he does run Egg and. Uh, I was really confused yeah, it was by Yeah, Sergeant. Yeah. I was like, what, are you, what, what kind of deck are you playing? Yeah, Abusive Sergeant. That like, <laughs> really caught me off because it's really good against um, yeah. Mirror Entity because he, he could proc my Mirror Entity just with the, mm -hmm. the Abusive Sergeant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, uh, here's the hard-hitting question, and I uh, hope you're ready for this one. Why didn't you play Summoner's Own Fireball, dude? Come on. We were disappointed. You're given a gift. Yeah, you're no fun at all. And, you, like, we gave you lemons, and then you just, you just, what did he do? Didn't, didn't make lemonade out of it. Yeah. You made some kale juice with it, <laughs> which is nasty and definitely not good <laughs> for you. Um, so, so why? Why not, man? Uh, so about the fireball? Yeah, why, well, why not the summoning stone? Oh. the shredder instead of the spell I mean, your, your line of play was perfectly fine. I was just. Oh, why? Why, uh, you, why, you, uh, why didn't I shred it instead of? Uh, yeah. Because I, I didn't think he could actually kill my summoning stone. Like he would either have to like draw the claw charge or like swipe. Or something yeah, like that's that. two very possible cards you might have in <laughs> yeah, his hand. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. the Druid of the Claw is actually that, really bad. He actually <laughs> had all those options. Yeah, but like if he if he had any of them options, then my next turn was like super good because I could like trade in, ping, play Shredder. 
But yeah. I was just, I was just, oh, play, well, I was well, just well. mainly playing on curve. I'm like, like, uh, Fireball in the head for a free minion. You were going to summon uh, another. You were going to summon another Shredder. <laughs> yeah, I, I wanted to use yeah. the summoning stone to but summon like, a Shredder. You would have had two Shredder. Oh my god! It was fine, Green Chief. You won the game. I mean, <laughs> it the, is result, fine, the result gives you. But the I am right displeased. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the result that matters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> result oriented thinking right there. No so. worries, man. I'm just uh, I'm just busting your balls. Congrats, man. Uh, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, for so Green, Green, no. so Green Chief, with your um, amazing strategy of uh, just going face. Going face? Yeah. It, uh, do you, how do you like your chances of actually becoming the first ever two-time DreamHack champion? Well, I my next match is against Purple, and I actually played Purple in like round seven or something. And uh, we had some pretty wacky games, I can tell you that. A Unfortunately, it wasn't streamed, so you couldn't see it, but like one of the turns was I spell slingered and he was playing patron. Uh, it was turn four, so he innovate patron, <laughs> innovate patron in a rage, whirlwinded. Oh. But from spell slinger, I got shadow and madness, so I could actually clear the board since I had a minion <laughs> on board. Wow. That was pretty wacky. That's but, so funny. Okay. Uh, Purple's lineup he has Malilock, he has patron, and uh, I can't remember his last deck. But his lineup's really good against mine, so this is going to be a really tough match for me. All right. Well, uh, good luck then. Uh, oh, what, I guess we'll just give you final words, um, and then we'll just go on our way. Final words. Uh, just thanks to everyone who supports me, and uh, keep watching. All right. I agree with that, guys, because after this, we are going to begin the semifinals here at the DreamHack Grand Prix. Top four has been decided. But who will win? We'll find out right after this break.